Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. We can see. Can you see my screen? Very well, very well. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So where did I stop? I stopped at objective, right? Yes, yes, objectives, yes. Okay. So I said I'm here mostly for the employees. Yes, the employers need to know the right thing to do, and the employees need to know their right. And they both have their effects. Now, I was talking about the employee not waiving their rights at all times with respect to um, compensation. Yeah? Uh, it's very important because when they waive their rights, it forms a culture. Employ employers of labor, as we see, some organizations with very bad safety culture, they feel they can go they can go ahead and do anything they like because it becomes a culture. People's practice, people's behavior, people's responses. As the previous speaker, he said some things I was going to note, but because of time, I couldn't. Um, very, very salient point, you know. Um, people's behavior informs the culture of the organization. We are taught, we are taught these things that even as lawyers in school, the psychology, the behavior, behavioral aspects of law and enforcement and even compliance. So it is important that the employ, employ, employees know their rights and understand their rights. There's a difference between knowing your rights and understanding it. And understanding your rights in, 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 entails engaging the right person, engaging the right person, engaging the right system, engaging the right organization. So it is very important. Um, and I, I put in here, acting as a lawyer. No, you can't. If you are not a lawyer, you cannot act as a lawyer. It's important you get one. You'll be impersonating, or probably you'll be you'll be you'll be shooting yourself in the foot if you try to act as a lawyer. I've had situations where some officers, officials of some companies that we've dealt with, organizations, try to act as a lawyer. They respond to lawyers when they're supposed to get their lawyer or their legal counsel to advise them. So they tend to respond very quickly to lawyers, and it gets them even more into trouble. So don't act as a lawyer if you are not one. Please get one. Okay, as um, a disclaimer, just before I continue, the content in these slides are general information and they do not serve as um, legal advice in any way. Yeah? If you require legal advice, like I said, you get a lawyer, you can contact, you can contact us, you can book consultation with our, um, our, um, our uh, NGO. Yeah, is a OSEC. I mean, the OSEC NGO I just talked about. We have a legal aid clinic aspect where we help uh, mostly indigent citizens, citizens who cannot afford um, their legal fees. Yeah, we help them with pro bono cases, victims of workplace accidents. So you can you can follow us on Instagram, um, on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and as well you can send us an email via OSEC at jdcpartners.com. So today we'll be looking at this topic on um, compensation. Um, the previous speaker mentioned something on compliance. Well, if I'm going to do something on compliance, it's going to be another day because there's actually a, uh, there's a connection between compensation and compliance, but they are quite different. So if I'm going to dwell on compliance, um, it's going to be a topic for another day. But for compensation, we are actually eating on the rights of an employee, especially an employee who has now become a victim of a workplace accident. What are the rights that are available? Now it has happened, like they say in Europe, it has now happened. So what, what is available for you as a human being, as an employee of labor, as someone who has worked with a particular organization, what is available for you? What are your rights? Yeah. So we'll be looking at the definition of terms. What is compensation? Occupational accident, um, who is an employee? There's a definition. Not everybody is an employee, technically. But when it comes to injury, is, it, is, is that um, differentiation? Is it relevant? We'll be looking at that as well. We'll be looking at the legal provisions, um, common law and statutes. Those are the major provisions for compensation um, on that, uh, uh, compensation for workplace accident victims. Then we have the Employee Compensation Act. We'll be looking at the background, what led to, you know, the, the, the rationale behind the act. Then the, the our case study, we'll looking at maybe one or two cases as our time per permits and what we need to know about the Employee Compensation Act. We'll also be answering this question. Please pay very good attention to what I have to say within the very few minutes because you will be answering this question um, or very, in an unconventional manner. I will not be waiting for your question. I, I'm going to ask you as a teacher, as an educationist, I'm going to be asking you questions before your question. So please pay good attention and encourage me so that I know that I've actually been listened to 
Yeah. Definition of terms. What is compensation? There are lots of definition on compensation. If you Google, if you go on, if you go in, um, check your dictionaries and all that, there, there are lots of definition. But I've tried to put this in context. Compensation as it relates to workplace injury refers to indemnification, restoring the person back to the previous position. It may, it may not ordinarily work that way, 100%, but at least to a very large extent, the person is being uh, uh, restored. I mean, the injured party. And you know, when it comes to workplace injury, it extends to death. How do you bring back the dead? You can't. You don't. You can't necessarily. But there are some things that happen as a result of the death. The dependents of the diseased can no longer have access to money to take care of themselves, to their income, because they are dependents. So, what do you do in that kind of situation? You can't just leave it like that. That, um, like what they say, um, where God has taken and he has. So what of the people that God has left, even if they are taking the disease the way, you know? So there's a need to compensate the, the victim. Because then we, we encounter this a lot of times. There's a reason why I said this. So many times these organizations, you know, with very bad safety culture, culture um, it, uh, it happens that they lose, they lose a staff. And then the family now says, Jekka Agba for long. Jekka Fisile. I'm like... Why? And this is the culture. So the culture is not just about compliance. Even after the incident has happened, people are still complacent. And this continues to happen. This organization continues to, the cycle just continues, you know? So there's a need for restoration. There's a need to compensate the family of victims of workplace accidents. Whether they ask for it, whether they buy for long or they don't, there's a need to compensate them. There's a need for governmental intervention. There's a need for the, the, the groups, the, the, the um, what they call it, the pressure groups, the, the organizations, the NGOs that, that are charged with that responsibility to put pressure on these organizations. And even the governmental parastatals, we have government parastatals that are responsible for this. There's a, there's a need not to keep quiet. Even when the disease, the family of the disease decides to buffalo, are not ready to fight. We have occupational accidents. Um, what's the definition of occupational accident? I chose the international, um, the global definition. That's the, the, the definition from the International Labor Organization um, Convention, which says that occupational accident is an unexpected and unplanned occurrence, including acts of violence arising out of or in connection with work, which results in one or more workers incurring a personal injury, disease, or death. So, Either of these things can happen. You know, I was listening to the previous um, speaker. I was talking, differentiating between accidents and incident. And that was really, really, uh, what they call it, that was really interesting because it just tells me that in, in a case of incidents, um, the, the role of the legal personnel is compliance, ensuring that there's a compliance with the set down rules. And when it comes to accidents, we are talking about compensation because it has happened. Someone needs to be restored back to his previous position. Now, what's the definition of employees? It's important we know this, although it is not necessarily important to this topic. It's not very significant because if you work in an organization and you get injured, whether there's an um, employee contract I think there's a, there's a network issue there. Hello, are you there? Hello, Mrs. Bumi, are you there? Um, while is uh, uh, what? Okay, while she's away, look, okay, I think she's still there, but the network is very bad. The network is very bad. Hello, ma. Uh, hello, can you hear us, ma? Hello? Hello? Yes, you can hear you now. Welcome back. The network is... Okay, all right. So, yeah, but, but I, I hope you heard a lot of the things I said. Um, you can just... Um, Hello? You can just go back in a uh, 10 seconds. Are you, are you there? You can hear you clearly. Okay. Yes. You're welcome back. I'm trying to restore my screen share. Yeah. No problem. Okay. 
Can you see my screen? It's trying to come up. Yeah, we, we can. We can. We can. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Very well. Cool. So when I stopped at employees, right? Yes. Who is an employee? Okay, so we have the workers that perform the manual labor or clerical work. We have the non-workers who perform administrative, executive, technical, and professional functions. Those are the ones that have employment contracts. And they say they are con the conditions of their employment are, de are defined in their employment contracts. However, this is a classification. Whew. Under the Labor Act, it doesn't affect an issue of workplace accident. These two people must be covered. They must be compensated. Are we there? Yes, we are fully. Good. Okay, so is my screen being shared though? Yes, we can. Yeah, we can see your screen. We can see the definitions you're giving us. Okay. Okay. Um, it was hanging here. Sorry. Okay. So next on the slide, uh, the legal pro uh, provisions for compensation. Before we go into the legal provision, you know, you know um, I'm not teaching lawyers. Lawyers are not meant to actually even cram the law. They know where the, where the law is found. They know the provisions. If I say I want to start teaching you the, stat the status for compensation, it's really of no relevance because you are still going to meet your lawyer. You're still going to consult your lawyer. Your lawyer is still going to represent you in court. You are still not going to rationale behind the law. And the important provisions that when you are faced with this kind of situations, you remember that, yes, I have a right to. I have this right. So I'll, I'll, go get, I'll go get a lawyer because I know I have this right. So I'm just trying to put that in perspective. So now, legal provisions for compensation. What's the rationale? First of all, an employee worker relationship gives rise to certain duties of the employer to the employee, which could be, which could be expressed or implied. It could be expressed or it could be, it could be expressly stated in the employment contract, and it could be implied by law. I started by uh, uh, our common, they become known, recognized by the English courts and it has been adopted and imported into Nigeria. You know, during the uh, um, colonial era, it has been imported and it is now set to law among, uh, in the, yeah, among it is now set to law as in a settled case law in Nigeria. There's an accepted principle of law that the employer has an implied duty of care, a duty to protect the health, welfare, and safety of workers at work. They, therefore, the philosophy of compensation is rooted in the accepted principle that a worker or dependent in case of death who sustains injuries gets ill or dies in work-related circumstances needs to be restored to previous position by the employer. So, there are legal provisions for the implied duty of care, and there are mainly two. You know, I talked about express, I talked about implied. Implied duty of care, of course, is our, our, our common law our status, those legal provisions. Why express is, okay, it is written in an employment contract, but the fact that it is not stated there doesn't mean that as an employee of labor, you do not have some rights, some implied rights inferred at law. The fact that it's not written in your employment contract doesn't mean that all you need to establish in a case of uh, a workplace accident is that there's a relationship, you worked for them. That's all that you need to establish as, as, as is settled law as of today. Yeah? Common law. Let's look at common law. What happened with common law? Um, there's an implied duty of employer to exercise reasonable care under common law. Like I explained earlier, common law uh, 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 decisions, case laws, you know, uh, uh, practices that has become a, a they have come of judicial knowledge. They become they become established in the UK and have been imported to Nigeria to guide our relationship, to guide our businesses, to guide all those different areas that the law law applies to. 
So there's an implied duty. Under this implied duty, um, what are those duties, rather? We have the provision of safe plants, including safe equipment, tools, materials, and appliances in the workplace. We have provision of safe and secure system of work that is a safe work process. Provision of the employee with reasonable, competent fellow employees. All these are implied duty of the employee. They don't need to state it in your, in your employment contract. It is implied. The law implies, I mean, the common law implies it. And of course, even our status that have now built up implies all this duty on the employer in an employment employer relationship. So let's move back to this. Sorry. We have the Employee Compensation Act. I will give a brief overview of this. Um, as we move on, I, I, I'm, I'm not important. It's very relevant to this discussion. It's, what is the major compensation, workplace accident um, victims compensation, as it is in Nigeria today, is the most uh, um, uh, is the most detailed of all these. Um, uh, uh, legislation, legislations. So we have the Labor Act. The Labor Act talks about the duty of the employer to medically examine workers being recruited before commencement of work or as soon as possible thereafter. Question, how many organizations do this? How many? Just note that question down towards the end of this presentation. Secondly, duty to provide transportation to place of work and to take care of the health of workers in the process, protection of the health and welfare of women and children, particularly against night work. Remember also that the Labor Act addresses situation where you do not have a contract. Yeah. Then Factories Act. Factories Act touches on issues like compulsory registration of factories, no overcrowding, fencing of dangerous equipment, coverage of vessels containing dangerous liquids, adequate training of any person to be assigned to operate machines, safe access into the factory. We cannot possibly um, consider all the provisions of these laws. So uh, I, I will just name the other laws that applies to you know, compensation and then go into a bit of details, even on the Employee Compensation Act. I also tell you, even the Employee Compensation Act, we cannot address all the details, all the provisions, but what you need to know as um, a non-lawyer, you would know about Employee Compensation Act, at least I promise that. And what you feel you should know and you don't know, then you can ask that question at the end of the class. Um, other statutes are the International Labor Organization Convention, um, Nigerian Constitution. This is quite... Um, when you talk about Nigerian constitution addressing um, health and safety, I, I smile and I'm sad at the same time. You know why? Because the provision for health and safety is not mental my rights. It is in chapter two of the 1999 constitution, which is just a directive principle of state policy. It's just saying we, we, we will try. We are not obliged. You cannot sue us for not protecting your health and your safety. We will just try. That is Nigerian constitution, the grand norm that addresses every other law. It's pathetic, I must say. And I'm hoping that with more pressure and more, um, what do you call it, more awareness, we will see the need to address this under the Nigerian constitution. Our legislators will see the need, you know. We have the National Environmental Standards and Regulatory Enforcement Agency Act. We have the fatal accident laws of states. Now, on to the um, Employee Compensation Act. We need to get a background. Why did we have this act in the... Mrs. Gumi, your network. Why is he doing what he's doing? Why is it relevant? 
Why do you need to know? And there's a, there's a little typographical error repetition act background. Okay, employee to prove that. The employee has uh, uh, claims for us. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but a few minutes, a few seconds ago, your, your voice was dragging due to network. Okay. So please, just take it. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, very well, we can hear okay, you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so the employer... Okay. I just put up my video once in a while so that you can see my face. It's also important for communication purposes. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. Prior to the act, the law required an injured employee to prove that the employer has a duty of care. That was under common law. You know, they brought claims under common law. You know, when, when you know, uh, uh, a victim of workplace accident, you know, wants to get a claim in court for compensation, it's usually brought under the common law, you know. So these are the things the employee must prove. Just imagine the pain. Let's go through it. We must prove that the employer has a duty of care owed to the worker. Under this duty of care, there are a lot of things you have to prove. I don't want to belabor you with that. You're not, I mean, lawyers know that. An accident has occurred. The accident was caused because the employer failed to exercise the duty of care. The accident caused personal injury to the employee. After all that, after you've proven that, then the employer now has some defenses can now come up with some defenses. Hello? Are we there? Yes, yes, yes. Are you hearing me? Okay. Come yeah, up we can hear defenses. you. Number one, you could say that the, that the worker knew of the damages or risk involved in the work and willing to assume the risk by um, accepting the job. Lawyers, we, we have a Latin, um, a Latin term for this. We call it um, voluntary, voluntary non-fit injury or something like that. Like you cannot, you cannot claim injury when you know the risk. You should, have, you should have assessed the risk before you took the job anyway. So now you have the job, you cannot complain. Imagine that. So the, the, the employer can actually um, pull off such a defense. In the past, no, not now. Then you could also say that a fellow worker or the claimant worker caused the accident to reduce damages. You could also say that the injured employers uh, uh, negligence contributed to the occurrence of the accident. In these two last two ones, it merely just reduces the damages that the empl employer would pay. Because if it shows that somebody else contributed to it, of course, they will jointly pay for the damages, you know. But for the first one, it's almost like complete exoneration. Like, you know what? You know what you were signed for. You know that the, the job was a risky one. So why did you sign up for it? This does not make sense at all. And because it did not make sense, it gave rise to the Employee Compensation Act. Just before we move, let's look at this case study. Let's look at what happened. Let's, let's brief on this pathetic case. In the case of Chagaru versus Yakubu, forgive me if I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'm not sure it's an English name. In that case, Yakubu was employed as a driver with a company and attached to one of the top officers of the company. As part of the schedule of his work, he had to take the cooks of Shagari to the residences late in the night. On one of the occasions, he was attacked by armed robbers who shot at his face. He was able to escape with the car. His boss, Shagari, rushed him to the hospital. The company paid the hospital expenses. Let's look at this case. Who really was at fault? Is it the company? Is it the, is it the person that was killed? Is it the armed robber that ran away? Who, who should be responsible for compensation? We don't know. After treatment, five pellets of bullets were extracted, leaving one pellet, which could only be extracted at the risk of serious negative health problems. Though Yakubu admitted he was no longer feeling pains, he instituted a legal action claiming 15 million naira, 5 million as special damages, and 10 million as general damages. The trial court found that Shagri and the companies were not negligent, but they still went ahead. You see the difficulty, the court was compassionate and moved with compassion and still felt, you know what, we need to give Yakubu something. So they gave him 300,000. And the company still, still appealed. Why would we pay 300,000? It's not our fault. Why, why, why would we pay? Are we the one that shot that thing? <laughs> you know? And they sued. And the court of appeal said, the lower court has said they were not uh, uh, negligent. The company was not negligent in any way. So why did the um, lower court still go ahead to award compensation against Yakubu, um, against the company for Yakubu. Why did the lower court still go ahead to award such compensation? And they struck it out. So what happened? 
Yakubu went with nothing. Now, this is very pathetic. Was very pathetic. And that was what we had. We had cases where um, workers get injured even at work and they don't get compensated by anybody because responsibility could not be tied to anybody. You couldn't stand, like, like the, the company would say, they, they would prove, get their lawyers to prove that they were not negligent in a simple form. I'm just putting that out in a very simple form. You know, get their lawyers to say, you know what, we're not negligent in any way. And uh, um, the, the, the victims don't get any compensation. So what did the law try to do? What did the law try to do? This, of course, led to the abolishment of common law, negligent liability defenses, either statutory or in judicial decisions. These defenses that we looked at was abolished. And that gave rise to the Employee Compensation Act 2010, which has repealed some previous acts, as we now have. Yeah? So under the Employee Compensation Act, these are the things you need to know as an employee. As an employer, you should also know this. It's important. Compliance, comply. Yeah? Build a good culture. Yes, you can do everything to prevent accidents. We are there to um, draw up, I mean, draw up like, um, what they call it, like, like, a, like a register. Of com a compliance register for you to tell you these are the laws you should comply with because you're in this industry. These are the laws we do all that compliance register. We draw it up for workers in the industry. Now I'm advertising myself, but it's needed. Yes, we do that. And uh, however, even when you've complied, things happen, accidents, and unexpected occurrence. It has not happened. What should you do? What should you have done with respect to compensation for your employees so that when it happens, you are not running from pillar to post. You are not getting a lawyer to lie. Because we are treating a lot of, of cases like that right now. So this part is also important. For Hello. the employers of labor to be aware and to do it. Safety culture permeates all these regions. Safety clients, enforcement, um, compensation. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? You can hear me, okay. All right, so what are those things that you need to know? They are all here looking at us. We have, um, the Employee Compensation Act established an open and fair system. You have to know that. First of all, that's the objective. Open and, oh, it's opened a very fair system for compensation for professional injury. Like it's open. What your compensations are, you know. What is available for your employer if anything happens is applicable to all employers and employee of labor in Nigeria. It is. The Employee Compensation Act is there, it's applicable to these two parties. Do we comply? We leave that question to uh, the audience as we move. You can, you, can, you can drop your chats in the chat room on your experiences and what you feel about this. The NSITF, NSITF is National uh, uh, Social Insurance Trust Fund Management Board. It's empowered to administer the act and fund under this act. So what is it all about the act and fund? An employer must pay 1% of the total monthly role of employee to the NSITF Management Board. So for every employer, 1% of the total monthly roll, payroll of your employee should go to, to the NS, NSTIF uh, um, board. And it shouldn't be taken from their salary, no. It's, it is just a percentage. You just use that to calculate the percentage that should go to NSTIF board. It shouldn't affect their salary. It shouldn't be taken from their, from 
a disabling injury is entitled to compensation, whether it's occurred in the workplace or not. This is very interesting. As long as it's in the course of your duty as an employer. Now, this is defined under the act, and you need a lawyer. When, 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 when you, you, you uh, uh, God forbid, you're a victim of an accident in the workplace or in the course of your employment, you need to give your lawyer the details so you'll be able to streamline and tell you if your, your injury, your disabling injury, falls under this uh, um, compensation act. Employee must notify employer of incident within 14 days. An employer must report to NSITF within seven days. And in the case of death, must report within 24 hours. That's a day. Yeah? Then we have an employee is entitled to compensation for mental stress arising from or in the course of employment. This is a very new development. development. It was not in the... Uh, previous um, uh, workmen 2010, so it was a very good development at the time. Uh, however, how this is proven, mental stress is proven, still leaves more to be desired in the courtroom. In the case of death, employees' widow or dependent is entitled to 30, depending on the circumstances, 30 to 90 percent of the employee's remuneration for life. So every month, they are meant to be paying the dependent, the widow, the children of the, the, the employee that has died. There's the, uh, they are meant to be paying them for life. A lot of us don't know this, but this is the position of um, the law. This is the position of the Employee Compensation Act 2010. No employee or dependent is allowed to waive the compensa compensation for which he is entitled. You are not allowed to negotiate with your employer. It is a crime. You are not allowed to negotiate with your employer on which, empl on which compensation you are entitled to. It is, it is a crime to negotiate under the act that this is what I'm entitled to. This is you are not allowed. It is a crime under the act. And the reason is not far-fetched. We've had organizations um, that try to uh, come, come under this act to bully their employees, you know, and shut down and, and continue this unsafe practice, which is not good. It's not good for our economy. It's not good for our society. Why killing manpower? Why killing people that are important to their family. Why making widows? Why making orphans? It is not good for our economy. So it has to stop. And the law legislated, the, the law has provisions on it. Are we complying? That's the question. So my next question, my audience, uh, I will let uh, while you take uh, that uh, to moderate that is, is this a myth or reality. I want to hear from our safety professionals. I want to hear from our employees. Of, uh, employees. I want to hear from my employer. I mean, I, I believe this is a discussion. I believe this is a conversation. Um, I'm a teacher by nature, but uh, beyond teaching you, I want to have a feedback. I want to know what is happening out today. Is this, do, does, this, does, does it really show that we have this act? Is it really showing? Have people been, do you know anyone who has benefited from this? You know, or do you know anyone who has been deprived from the benefiting from this? What are your experiences? Please, I need you to share with me. And um, I will conclude this section by saying, um, it's my three line word. I mean, it has been my line word for, since the beginning of the year. I'm learning, I'm unlearning, I'm relearning in the way I do things. And I, I'm enjoying you as an employer of labor, as an employee of labor to embrace this, this, this um, my, my three line words. Learn, unlearn, relearn. Yeah, so I'll be in the participant section, participating in the discussion. Thank you very much, um, Wally, for having me. Yeah, thank you very much, Mrs. Bumi. You did just.